Hi, and welcome to First Bite, a Nation's Restaurant News Podcast. I'm your host, Holly Petri. Today is Tuesday, November 8th, and here are your top stories. First, parent to emerging restaurant Crisp and Green names Kelly C. Baltis CEO. Steel Brands founder and current CEO Steel Smiley to step down to an advisory role and serve as chairman of the board. Second, restaurant kiosks are having a moment amid an ongoing labor shortage. Executives from Shake Shack, Yum Brands, and Burger Fi have touted the benefits of kiosk deployments during their recent earnings calls. Third, third, NRN editors discuss restaurant earnings week plus ghost kitchen players. Plus, hear from Amir Mustafavi, CEO and founder of South Block. Fourth, as Starbucks customers get younger, its sales continue to skyrocket. Starbucks's customized beverages business reached $1 billion in 2022, largely driven by millennials and Gen Z, and especially when it comes to iced and specialty holiday offerings. And finally, the 11 restaurant chains with the best ambiance. As consumers return to in-person dining, ambiance is regaining the importance it held among customers before the pandemic began. Now let's dive deeper into one of these stories. McDonald's first started testing self-service kiosks in 2003, an ice age ago in tech terms, but it took quite some time for the technology to prove its return. In fact, the McDonald's U.S. system didn't implement kiosks system-wide until 2020. Taco Bell also pressed the gas on kiosks in 2020 and even introduced a kiosk-only cantina model last year. The technology is expected to play a big role as the chain works toward its 50% digital sales mix goal. Panera was a few years ahead on kiosk integration and has since made them a focal point of its new digital-only formats. With heavyweights like McDonald's, Taco Bell, and Panera proving the value of self-ordered kiosks, the slow trickle that began in 2003 seems to be accelerating into a steady stream at larger chains. This is evidence from the past few rounds of earnings calls, including Shake Shack's Q3 call on Thursday, in which CFO Kate Fogarty said kiosks are the chain's most profitable channel, yielding higher check sizes, higher margins, and better labor utilization. That labor utilization piece is particularly critical now, as the industry remains about 500,000 employees short of pre-pandemic numbers. Learn more from senior editor Alicia Kelso. There were, you know, there were several executives who noted the benefits of kiosk deployments during this quarter, uh, and that and that sort of caught my attention a little bit because kiosks are really they're not new. You know, I've been I've been covering the industry for I think 12 years now, and I distinctly distinctly recall you know the newness of them back in like 2007, 2008, 2009. Um, so the fact that the that executives are calling this technology out specifically seems really interesting to me because again they're not new. Um, but when you peel back, you know the challenges that operators are facing, and sort of this perfect storm of what consumers are now used to, it makes total sense. So kiosks, you know, they do a couple things. A, they say, you know, they're high profit um, because customers just, they stand there and they're able to sort of go through the menu flow longer. They're more comfortable. You know, there've been a number of uh, psychological studies that prove that they they don't have that stress at the counter uh, to, to order in a timely fashion. Um, so they, what, what happens is they sit there and they, they add on and, um, you know, they comfortably order and the, t- the tickets are, you know, consistently higher uh, because, of, because of that. And then second, you know, we are still dealing with this persistent uh, labor shortage in the industry. Um, in fact, uh, Friday's um, labor report showed that we're still about 500,000 uh, jobs um, under where we were pre-pandemic. Uh, so again, it's it's persistent, and and what kiosks do is they they redeploy that labor um, to maximize you know the employees who are in in uh, in the restaurant at any given time. And this was especially pronounced um, at Shake Shack. Uh, they talked about their kiosk deployment, the benefits at length um, because of the labor savings that that they had, and that obviously that translates to. Uh, cost savings because you are redeploying labor, saving uh, in some areas on labor, um, and ultimately saving those costs. Um, at the same time, um, customers are just used to the technology now, and that that started to become the case in uh, like 2015, 2016, 2017. Um, it picked up when McDonald's went system wide with it around 2018, um, but uh, the pandemic forced us all to become uh, really s- deeply uh, 
involved and knowledgeable about touchscreen, about contactless, um, you know, it, and, and so I think that accelerated what we were seeing um, in 2018 again. Uh, and so, again, there's like a perfect storm of labor shortages, um, the need for labor efficiencies, um, the need to maximize profits right now. Um, as a lot of concepts still recover, and uh, just co consumer comfort levels. Um, and I think that's why we're seeing, uh, again, the specific call out uh, for technology that's been around for a really, really long time. Um, I mean, that's that's my opinion, at least. So. Well, it's an interesting opinion to have, and it's a great opinion to have, because <laughs> you are our expert now. And so, <laughs> and so what do you think about the cost when it comes to these? I mean, that's something that, that there is to think about when it comes to sure. cost, especially because people are cost cutting right now. Sure, uh, it's it's a perfect question, Holly. And it because this technology has been around, I think McDonald's started testing this technology in 2003. And I, I just don't even know if McDonald's could really justify the cost back then. It has dropped as the technology has improved and that's the, you know, that's the cadence of technology adoption. So I think the return on investment is far more pronounced now, um, even you know uh, in 2018 when McDonald's pulled the trigger system and went system wide with this and, and asked their franchisees to sort of pitch in here. Um, so I think cost. I, I don't want to say it's it's not a factor because that's just factually inaccurate for any restaurant operator, um, but it's it, it's certainly you know significantly less of a factor than it was when we first started having this, you know, this conversation about kiosks even 10 years ago. Um, and again, when you factor in that where that return comes from with everything we've just mentioned, I don't know when this labor shortage is going to end. I don't know if anybody can predict, you know, how this is going to play out, when employees are going to return. You know, I think restaurants are, are throwing everything at the wall right now to to maximize the labor that they do have, and you know, and that includes wa uh, wage inflation, which is really, really a, a huge narrative right now. I actually just got off the call with Noodles and Company, and that's one of their biggest pain points is wage inflation, and they're certainly not alone in that. Um, so kiosks become far more attractive, you know, when you don't know how the uh, wage inflation equation is going to play out. We can we can somewhat predict for you know somewhat predict commodities coming down a little bit you know we're seeing chicken fall we're seeing uh some other commodities co cost of goods start to start to um start to uh, normalize a little bit but the wage the wage uh, inflation piece remains just uh, just a big equation just a big uh, question mark so i think that's where these kiosks are going to be a little bit more attractive and the return is going to be um far more justified now I'm curious because we're in different markets. In my markets, my McDonald's and my Shake Shacks have always had kiosks. I mean, what about yours? Well, I and I think that's the difference between, you know, you're in an urban setting. I am, a, you know, in suburb, literal suburbia. <laughs> and so we, you know, my McDonald's franchisee up the street probably had to worry a little bit less about dine in traffic and, you know, I don't I don't think they're those operators probably aren't going as hard on, on kiosk deployment. But when you notice, you know, the conversation that, that's been had, um, the burger fries, the Shake Shacks, um, KFC was interesting. Dine-in traffic is returning um, at, at all these brands, including McDonald's. Um, so I think that's kind of what's coming into play. The drive through is not going to go away. It's certainly not going to go away in my market. Um, the drive-thru doesn't really exist all that much in your market. Uh, so, you know, I, I think basically that's the, that's the case study here is there's no one size fits all. Uh, it's, a, it's a great question, but as dine-in traffic returns in these suburban markets that more companies are starting to prioritize in their development mix, including again, to go back to Shake Shack, you know, they're focused on on the suburban, suburban market uh, as an example, then kiosks are gonna become a bigger part of that conversation. I do wanna note, however, um, you know, this, there are smaller operators that are moving completely away from kiosks. And, you know, we've, we had that conversation at Nation's Restaurant News back in September, uh, where several smaller operators, they're just not seeing 
that big of a return on kiosks, if any, at all. And but, but you look at the concepts that mentioned that, and they tend to be, um, you know, more sit down leaning experience um, uh, type of concepts versus the ones that uh, that have to prioritize speed, uh, like the like the sweet greens, like the Shake Shacks and KFCs. Um, so there are there are several different conversations that are happening. Um, you know, my my focus is right now is the bigger guys that are that are prioritizing speed uh, and labor shortages are leaning into this. That doesn't mean it's going to be a, a thing industry wide, though. And and I caution against that. I mean, it's the kiosks are not going to take over. We're still going to very much have service and hospitality where appropriate. So I, you know, it's, it's fascinating how, how disparate everything is working. And I think if the pandemic taught us anything, it's that we have to focus on the disparities between markets. We have to focus on what works in New York city versus Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and I think that operators are getting much smarter about that because they have the, they have more data now than they ever had. Thanks for listening to today's episode of first bite. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new one. Until then, stay up to date with all your news on NRN.com.